Hello everyone, welcome back to Seed to Table. Uh, the other day we showed you some uh, pest problems that we were having and some of the pests that um, we're gonna try to control. And today I'm gonna show you what I use um, for the pests that we have. Um, and we will include the links to these down below. Uh, one of Gardner's best friends in organic gardening is going to be neem oil. Okay, and I usually I order this by sometimes two or three or four at a time because this will take care of a lot of the pests that you see in your gardens. Um, and the other one that we're going to be using on today is BT. BT is good for... Um, any pests that eat your uh, your 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 plants, and those would be the worm uh, pests. Um, so BT is good for that. Neem oil is good for anything from Japanese beetles. Um, it will help uh, with the flea beetles. Um, it will also help with the cabbage uh, beetles and the um, uh, cucumber beetles. Okay. So, neem oil. If you can't, if you can't do anything else, neem oil, and if you can, uh, do Monterey BT or BT. It doesn't have to be Monterey. That's just uh, one of the producers. Now, I am going to do something on today because I know people have time constraints when they're trying to maintain pests and anything else in their garden, and it could be controversial. But this is what I will tell you. I am going to mix my neem oil and my Monterey, my BT together. Now, there are many opinions out there about mixing, of course, two chemicals together. And like I said, do your own research before yes. you decide to do that. I'm going to do it because I've done it before and it worked. You will get a whole lot of advice about why not to do it and, and this, that, and the other. But again, do your own research and make up your own mind on whether or not you're going to do it. Okay. Today, we're going to do it, okay? Mm -hmm. So, and follow the directions on that comes on the containers. For the BT, um, if you see here, it says for fruits and vegetables, we're going to mix four teaspoons per gallon, okay? okay? And for the neem oil, it says to mix a half a teaspoon, um, to mix one and one half teaspoon with one quart of water. Now these are one gallon sprayers. So we're going to put four teaspoons of BT and we're going to put six teaspoons, one and a half times four yeah. of neem oil in a gallon of water. And we're also going to add a half a teaspoon of mild dish water per quart. So we're gonna add two teaspoons of mild dish soap so okay. that the oil will mix with the water and if you can use some kind of organic dish soap um that's fine but if not you know you can put a few squirts of dawn in there if you have it okay and that won't damage the plants at all that's it won't damage the plant as long as you don't spray it that's why you can't spray it in the heat of the day wow. okay. you have to apply this either early early morning when it's cool late in the afternoon when it's cool or on a cloudy day if you spread on your plants during the heat of the day, it will burn your plants. Okay. okay. That makes sense. So timing is important. So we're gonna take our measuring, and these are just a cheap set of gardening uh, uh, measuring spoons that I got that I use for the garden, and I also have some measuring cups as well. So I've already put the water in. Okay. So I'm gonna shake this up really well. The structure just came off. <laughs> Get that in there. And this is the BT. Again, you can use any brand of BT you want. Okay. I will put the link down to this if you want to use that. And we're putting four of these in each container, in each sprayer. Again, this may, you know, people have their opinion about mix or don't mix these two together. It's completely up to you, but I just advise you to do your own research and you know your garden better than anyone else. So 
do your own research and then make your own decision on whether or not you want to mix these together. But because neem oil affects certain bugs and BT affects certain others, just to save time, hit them all at once. I, I try to, yeah. <sighs> so I think something is better than nothing. And if you, I'm gonna put six teaspoons of neem oil in each sprayer. Okay. Um, my thinking is something is better than nothing. And if I don't have time to do one or the other, I don't want my plants to be unprotected. Okay. Okay. And neem oil is organic. Okay. And so is BT. And you can look up how BT affects worms. It messes with their digestive system. And of course, neem oil just smothers them all together. Keeps them from breathing. Okay. So. And now you're going to put the soap in. And always wear gloves when you're doing this. Now I got a brace on my hand, so I don't have one on this side. But always wear gloves, and I got this my garden towel sitting here because they can become messy. So now I'm gonna put two tablespoons, two teaspoons of the dish soap. In each container. And this will help the oil to mix with the water. Okay. Never would have known that. Oil and water do not mix. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to put, I'm just going to kind of use this to stir it up a little bit. And I'm using, I'm, I'm making two containers because I have so much to spray. Now you can't store this. This cannot be stored. So only make what you need okay. or use what you make. You cannot cannot store this um, overnight or a day or a week or two. And then, you know, it's not something that you can pre-make and, and use it another day. Once you make it, you have to use it. Okay. But I know I have a lot to spray today. And... Even if I have only a little bit left, then I can just get rid of that. And you're you're to get rid of what you don't use and clean out your containers for the next. Another thing too is make sure that you mark your containers that so you're gonna you know be using ones. so you'll know what is what. Now I've got a, this one marked Neem and this one marked BT, um, but um, I'm mixing them both together. So. All right. Pump it up. And you want to get a sprayer like this. They don't cost me much. You can get them at your uh, big box store, Lowe's, Home Depot. Um, Ace Hardware, I'm sure, has them. You can order them online. And probably Amazon. Amazon. But these are really good because the importance of spraying your plants is you need to spray on the bottom of the leaves as well. Ah. So the first thing we're going to spray today is, uh, is the tomatoes. Uh, as you can see, they are growing and they need to be pruned. But I'm going to spray them first because they're getting in the stage now to where the tomato worm, the horn worms, uh, will come. And the BT that's in this solution uh, will target them directly. Okay. I've already got my container adjusted, my spray adjusted. So, as you can see, you just go through and spray all your plants. Get up in there. Oh yeah, you're getting a nice lather. That's why it's good to use one of these sprayers because it makes it a whole lot easier to get spaces that you can't reach normally. 
and like I said, I'm going to come out and um, prune these in another few days. With this rain that we've had, these things have really, in the last few days, they have just gotten out of control. Yeah, these look wild back here. <laughs> <laughs> so they really need to be pruned. Really need to be pruned. We need to create some airflow in them so that they don't get any kind of fungus or anything on them that will spread. But they, we have tomatoes. Praise God because that early, late frost that we had, this is the second iteration of tomatoes that I planted. The first one, the frost got it. So, oh yeah. Yeah. That was a lot too. <laughs> so we finished spraying all the tomatoes and now we're gonna spray um, the squash. These squash are growing like crazy. Yeah, I came out earlier today and did some maintenance on them. Picked off some bug eggs and uh, some squash bug eggs and killed a few squash bugs. Um, and the the neem oil and the BT. I haven't seen them be very effective on once the bug becomes mature. Oh, and as you can right see, now. there goes some eggs. Um, so the maintenance that I normally, um, and when you got eggs like this, just take your hand and just and just get them off so they don't hatch. Um, and you really have to. Make sure that you spray underneath of the underside of these leaves. And like I said, they may not control the adult bugs, but they will control the nymphs. And those are the eggs that have hatched because they still have soft bodies. And neem oil will kill them on the spot. Oh, wow. I was out here earlier today and I found a few of them that had already hatched, the little ones that still had the soft shell and I sprayed them with neem oil and they they were taken care of immediately and it was also the neem oil also if you notice right here that is a cucumber beetle that also will eat up your squash and any of your uh, cucumbits and the neem oil will take care of that got him will kill him as well so there is benefit to spraying your squash and your cucumbers with this mixture. And I also have to come out and do some maintenance on these as well. I'm gonna clean out these bottom leaves. And if you look down in there. Oh yeah, those squash are. Ready for harvest. Real big. Um, and I'm gonna come out at a different Time and clean out all these bottom leaves and so that you can get some good airflow going through these plants. And that'll help cut back on fungus and things like that. Yeah. Powdery mildew and all of that. Especially since it's been so wet in the last few days. So you want to spray those and again it's important that you get underneath the bottom of the leaves and make sure So we're now going to see if we can take care of some of these worms and the BT in this solution will address that. You can see the worm damage. Oh yeah, all those holes. Yeah, they are having themselves a field day with these brassicas. What's okay. a brassica? The brassica family includes cabbages, collards, kale, um, spinach, um, cauliflower, things like that. Those are all in the brassica families. And you get the cabbage bugs, cabbage worms, and uh, 
different kind of worms that love to get down. And what they do is, see right here? See that cabbage forming down in there? Yep. Well, they bury themselves down as the cabbage is forming, and they basically eat it from the inside out. Oh, wow. Yeah. See that cabbage right there? That's the head of a cabbage that's forming. And they'll get down in there, and the leaves will cover them up. And that's why you have to really, with cabbages, you have to really get down in there and spray down at the core because when the, where the cabbage is, is forming mm -hmm. to prevent them from eating up the cabbage. Last year they decimated my cabbage. See right here? Let me show you one that's maybe too late for. See how they have completely Oh yeah. Right. And so they eat it in your cabbage. They eat your cabbage away. See? Oh yeah. That's yep. where the cabbage is forming. And so this would have been part of the cabbage that formed they ate it up. Mm. Yeah. Another good way is to you can cover you can cover these types of crops with uh, netting um, to try to keep the moth that lays these eggs, these worms, from getting into your cabbages. Um, and you just have to really, really stay on top of things. So earlier today I was out in the garden and I was walking around and noticed that the Japanese beetles were taking over my strawberry plants. So just straight neem oil with no BT added. Neem oil, water, and a little bit of soap. And I sprayed it directly on the strawberry plant and on the beetle. These are Japanese beetles. And I left them because I wanted you to see. I sprayed them directly on the beetles and you can see how well the neem oil works against the beetles. And if you look oh, there, wow. they were mating. Yeah, they're good and dead too. So I just sprayed inside the leaves and got a lot of it. But you can see how they were decimating the leaves, see? And this is how they eat the leaves. And I left the berry, that's how they eat the berries. They eat them like they're taking chunks out of them. This is just in a couple of days. Yes. And I also put out a bee bag, a beetle bag. And this is a bag of bugs that you can get from any of the any of the um, big box stores. And I put this out and as you can see, it's already got that at least that many beetles in it. Wow. Okay. So this in conjunction with me spraying, hopefully it'll keep them down and they won't eat up all the berries. God bless you. Have a blessed day. All right.